Hey guys, welcome back to European Exotic Center. Next to me, we have a 2016 McLaren 570S. Car has 12,000 miles on it and also has a matte gray wrap, which I think looks fantastic. With the new McLaren Artura arriving just next year, replacing the 570S, how does this car hold up around five years later? This came out as the baby entry-level McLaren and it packs about 562 horsepower and does have a V8, twin turbo V8. The Artura will have a V6, which is not the most attractive thing to some people. And so, how does this stack up? Starting off in sport mode, you get 562 horsepower. Zero to 60 happens in 3.1 seconds. 443 foot-pounds of torque. Top speed is 204 miles an hour. Seven speed dual clutch transmission. Of course, it has a new mono cell, carbon fiber tub, mono cell two, as they called it. And it's about three inches lower than the 650S, which just makes getting in and out that much easier. It says 562 horsepower, but it, these have been dynoed to be making that to the wheels. So McLaren, for whatever reason, tend to kind of underrate their cars. We've even got the carbon paddles from the McLaren P1, which is just very nice because the well, the 12 seat paddles were just kind of a little, sm a little small. Traditional McLaren fashion, it is on a sort of rocker panel, so you can upshift and downshift just using one hand. Push the downshift paddle, it will upshift for me. So it allows you to really use this car every day in any kind of scenario. On the phone call, whatever it is, you can just drive with one hand. So just small things like that are very nice. I do want to put it in track mode though. So to do anything with this car, you have to press active first. You have normal, sport, and track for your performance and your handling. Let's put that over to track. Oh. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Shifts are noticeably punchier. You do put it into track mode. The speedometer changes and becomes much more aggressive, much more track oriented. Your gear select is enlarged. Steering gets a bit tighter. So this is no longer hydraulically connected suspension. It is traditional roll bars and just your normal sports car type of feel to it. Right off the bat, compared to the 650 and 720S, it just feels that much more analog. You can kind of feel everything moving around beneath you just a bit more, not in a sort of unsettling way, but just a, a sports car way. Everything is connected in a traditional way. Because of that, it does ride nice, but it doesn't have that sort of Mercedes S-Class cloud-like ride that the 650S has. The steering, I will say, is fantastic in this car. Still has hydraulic power steering. Everybody else now is pretty much electric power steering and that gives them a huge advantage when it comes to overall experience and road feel. And it's still an immensely fast car. Brakes. That, I can tell you, it doesn't get old. Not as terrifying of an acceleration as the 650S. It's a much more predictable power band. It still has some, I don't wanna say crazy lag, but it still has some of that turbo lag where it definitely kicks in pretty hard. But it, it, the way it comes on, the way the power is delivered is more linear than in a 650S. This does have 285 rear section tires, actually quite skinny tires for the type of car, but it just allows you to be a bit more playful with that back end having skinnier tires. And the, I mean, it still has plenty of grip. I mean, don't get it twisted. Because of that carbon tub, I mean, handling is still phenomenal. With the new Artura coming out next year, that's gonna be a V6. And I have heard it. Sounds good for a V6, I mean, of course, but it's, it's no V8. And you could say that the steering in a way kind of makes up for the lack of Ferrari noise. 
Underpass, underpass. Underpass. <laughs> and the way you pick up speed is so effortless. It, when you downshift between three and four and a half thousand, it really kind of pops on the upshift. That is not boring. That sounded like a Star Wars gunship. <laughs> People were kind of thinking it was a little bit ludicrous. They were calling this a sports car, not a supercar. I mean, it's faster than a 458. Faster than a Huracan. It's a supercar. It's a full-out supercar. It has some sports car elements to it. Yeah, steering is so good on this car. And not as darty as in a Ferrari, but I actually prefer that. It's quite heavy steering. And I like that it doesn't dart in so quickly because I think Ferrari steering tends to be a bit too quick for my liking at least. Zero to 60 is whatever. There's plenty of cars that are faster than this, but it's really after 60 miles an hour when McLarens tend to just shine yeah after four and a half thousand it really starts to build i'll say it again it's not a terrifying speed like the 720s is almost borderline psychotically fast like it is just hypercar speed that is fun but also terrifying this is still very fast and it can get you in a lot of trouble but it's more manageable and the brakes are also tremendous Good pedal feel, which is kind of hard to nail with ceramic brakes that tend to have kind of kind of iffy sensitivity to the pedal. But these are great. I think this is an entry-level car that is faster than a 458, and not too far off from a 488 is pretty crazy. It really just comes alive. After 60, 70 miles an hour, it just keeps climbing, and there's no sign of slowing down. The whole point of this car is to have a little bit less grip, a bit less of that hyperspace feel that you get in the other McLarens and the Super Series models, and it's just a bit more driver involvement. And because of that, it is more fun on the road, I would say. It has a bit more personality to it. Even without the hydraulic suspension, it still rides better than most of its competitors, which is very impressive. Ooh. Does, yeah, downshifts are very satisfying the way they kind of just spike up interior is very well thought out coming from the 12c in the 650s let's just say 650s it's a much i think better designed interior it is a bit tighter inside i would say overall but it's quite satisfying the way it's laid out and the way it's been executed do you have your bowers and wilkins sound system it's actually a 12 speaker i think 1200 watt sound system so i mean in a cabin this small it really sounds good i also like just the simple steering wheel no buttons on it, no turn signals. It's just a simple wheel. McLaren hasn't switched over to what Ferrari and Lambo have done with putting everything on the steering wheel and it makes it a bit cluttered, in my opinion. And I just like the simple kind of back to basic steering wheel. I also do have a little shelf behind you as well, which is nice just to want to add some bags or some duffel bags, groceries, whatever it is. The front trunk is also a decent size. You can drive this every day, which is the case with pretty much all the modern exotics can drive them every day this can just be your only car and you'd be fine and what is crazy is that this is the entry-level mclaren or came out as the entry-level mclaren and it is just as fast as the legendary mclaren f1 from 20 plus years ago in terms of acceleration of course top speed that dominates everything else still but in terms of acceleration this is just as fast as the f1 which is insane for an entry-level mclaren I think it's a very good looking car as well. I think it looks much better than the 650S and the 12C. 570S was a very nice departure from the older cars. It was a uh, new look, new tail lights, which look like sort of the McLaren logo. Nice rear diffuser, aggressive headlights as well. No, it's the baby McLaren is actually a couple of inches longer and wider than the 650S. Overall, I think it's a very nice looking car. Proportions are right. I also love how McLaren hasn't really, isn't really too mainstream yet. I mean, they are, they're getting there, but like, you know, in terms of pop culture, you don't really hear much about McLaren. You just hear about, you know, Lamborghini, Ferrari. Just a man truck. Yeah, that's all you, you know. Still an amazing car. In five years, it's not that long. Like, that's not a very long time, but really, actually in the car world, it kind of can be. Everything is moving so fast now. It's hard to keep up, but I think the 570S is still 
and always kind of has been an amazing bargain. In the real world, uh, this is a fantastic car. You know, of course the Artura will start off much more expensive than a used 570 now. There's no question the Artura will have better performance than the 570S. I'm sure it's incredible on the track even, and even just, again, and speed-wise, it's probably amazing, but it, it's gonna have a V6. It's gonna kind of lose that element of personality that McLaren is already struggling to kind of capture. But I do think the 570 has really captured it best. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down below. This car is for sale here at European Exotic Center. You can check out our website and view all the photos of the vehicle. And we will see you guys in the next one.